Captain's Log, star date, 11-28-17.9. We have entered a spectacular golden age of artificial intelligence. Today we will all join Alexa on a journey of discovery, a most critical mission about the power and potential of voice. Ladies and gentlemen, Space may be the final frontier, but it is still day one for artificial intelligence and Amazon Alexa. Computer, please help me give a warm welcome to Rohit Prasad, Vice President and Head Scientist, Amazon Alexa. It's always so cool to hear William Shatner speak. As a kid growing up in India when I was seven years old, I used to drop everything and run to watch the show when it used to air over the weekends. Uh, this memory is still with me and has been such an inspiration. In fact, Captain Kirk and his crew talking to a computer without any interface in front of them but just by voice has been an incredible, iconic image of voice computing as we know it. But there's more. With the advent of computing from the very early days, people have tried to talk to computers in one form or the other, be it your car, be it your television set. Let's take a look. Computer on, record. Recording. This is the robot calling. Do you read me? Over. Keep him talking. I'm Johnny Five. Talk to man. Hello, it's about time you got around to me, Dr. P. I've been waiting 24 hours to find out where I am, who I am, who you are. Can I have some answers? Certainly, Buck. That's why I'm here. Hey, what is this? You're a car. Cars don't talk. Correct. I am not a car. Allow me to introduce myself. I am a CL4PTP steward bot, but my friends call me Contra. I don't need that. Pretty, have you heard anything new? Dixie, go to condition yellow. We've got to stop it. Because please blow out trajectory. Computer, freeze program. Grab, grab, grab. Alexa, play music. Okay. Such science fiction has inspired many products. We were similarly inspired by the Star Trek computer five years ago and started building a computer that can be built into everything and be available everywhere just by voice. We brought that vision to fruition with Alexa and Echo in 2014 and since then have expanded these devices into many different categories and also expanded to many different locations in the world. Tomorrow, you'll hear Amazon SVP Tom Taylor talk about the momentum we have in the Alexa business and where we are taking it next. Today, my mission is to uh, talk about three things. First, how are we making Alexa smarter every day? Because for an AI, that is ultimately the most important thing. Second, how you as developers can make use of this incredible investment in Alexa to make it a smart AI so that you can delight your customers. Third, but last but not the least actually, we have had this university competition called Alexa Prize, which is about advancing the state of art in conversational AI. And I'm thrilled to announce the winners today. And I'm sure you are as excited as I am. And in the front row here, we have the participants sitting and I'm sure you're anxious to learn. And I've had many questions asked who the winner is. I don't know yet. One of the most important attributes and indicators of intelligence for any AI is how fast and how well it acquires new skills. Over the past 12 months, we've added hundreds and hundreds of skills to Alexa as ourselves as Amazon first. Take, for example, calling. You can call your friends and family by simply saying, call mom, for instance. You can also drop in on mom through video calling if she has given you permission. Incredibly seamless to use. We have also 
expanded what is the most uh, used skill in, uh, in Alexa, which is music or entertainment. Now you can make use of multi-room music. You can play music anywhere in your house. You can target a particular device, or you can play music everywhere in the house. Again, a pure delighter. What's been incredibly amazing to see to me is the amount of skills that you all in this room have been developing. This has been kept on growing in terms of skills developed through Alexa Skills Kit. There's a skill for hailing a ride through Uber or Lyft. There are skills to order pizza when you need them. There are skills to control your smart devices in your homes. All very natural to use. And we are just having an incredible momentum here of, you, of developers building skills for Alexa and delighting their customers. First, let's take a look at how we are being making Alexa smarter. One of the things, as you know, is the human brain is very multifaceted and interconnected. It's ve Alexa's brain is very similar in that. It needs to process a lot of context to make decisions just like hum we as humans do. One of the advantages is that Alexa's brain is in the AWS cloud, which means it can learn and add more capabilities very fast and make it delightful for our customers and gets better every day. Let's take a look at the simplistic view of the brain first. The very first thing when you speak to Alexa, let's take this example of Alexa play message in a bottle by Sting, is Alexa on the device is listening for just the wake word. In this case, the wake word is Alexa. When it's confident that a wake word was spoken, an audio stream is open, the lights come on with the LED ring on the, on the device or on the screen, and then the audio starts streaming to the cloud, where what you said in terms of audio bits is being converted by automatic speech recognition, or ASR on this slide, into sequence of words. The next stage is for what we call natural language understanding, or NLU, to interpret these words, which means extract meaning from this utterance to decide what a particular skill or a set of skills should do next. By that, we mean it's figuring out the intent of what the user wants and then issuing a directive. In this case, the directive is play some music. And in, the, in this particular specific utterance, it's play music by artist type Sting and the song Message in a Bottle. When that is done, there's an incredible amount of processing happening above the layers of speech recognition and natural language understanding as well, which I'll talk about in the future slides. But what's underlying to this is that over the last 12 months, we have been able to make all of these foundational capabilities of speech recognition, natural language understanding, wake word recognition, text-to-speech synthesis, all of these better by the ability to learn on large quantities of data with tremendous amount of AWS GPUs we have available to us so that we can run many powerful algorithms such as deep learning at scale to make Alexa better every day. Here are a few things we have done already in terms of foundational speech recognition and natural language understanding. One of the key challenges when you're working on technologies like machine learning is that you need a large quantity of labeled data to make the understanding capabilities be better in this case of Alexa. What we have invented is what we call active learning, which is a technique by which Alexa itself figures out which are the most important utterances to get human labels for so that you're not randomly selecting a lot of utterances and annotating them because it's just not possible. So this is a more semi-supervised way of learning and making Alexa better every day. The second, I mentioned a lot of understanding is dependent on context and processing context of different forms. Our natural language understanding layer is able to take many forms of context and learn and interpret the utterance with the highest accuracy possible. That by that, we mean contextual interpretation ranking is another key capability we added to Alexa as the number of devices, as the number of people using it, your personal preferences, and so forth. Lastly, Alexa needs to be very robust to speaker accents, device characteristics, mic arrays, everything. With Alexa voice service, we have brought many devices that now have Alexa. 
When that's happening, Alexa needs to be robust to every environment of any different kind of acoustics. And that's happening with techniques like unsupervised speaker adaptation and device adaptation that we are able to do where there is no human in the loop for learning, and Alexa self-adapts. I mean, this was all about layers of intelligence and improvements in the foundational capabilities. But as I mentioned, context comes in many forms. And what we have done over the last 12 months is add a lot of contextual learning capabilities to Alexa. I'll start off first by talking about what we as humans do very naturally. When we talk to each other, we ask ourselves follow-up questions. And you respond as a human without asking for repeating the exact same information that was in the previous utterance in the dialogue. So this we call context across terms. Let's see that in action. Hey, Alexa, where is the Mob Museum? I found A, the Mob Museum. It's 6.6 .6 miles away on Stewart Avenue in Las Vegas. It's open now until 9 p.m. Alexa, how do I get there? The fastest route to the Mob Museum at 300 Stewart Avenue takes about 17 minutes via Frank Sinatra Drive and I-15. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. All right. Such context resolution seems trivial as humans. But this is not something where we are simply reliant on presence of pronouns like it and there. What happened here is on the first utterance, the user asked for where's the Mob Museum. And then for the next follow-up utterance, there was no specifics about Mob Museum in there. This becomes harder and harder as you think about every natural dialogue we have with Alexa or amongst ourselves. The way we are solving this problem is, again, in a probabilistic fashion. What we do is from the previous utterance, in this case, where the user was looking for uh, uh, direct location of the Mob Museum, is to carry that intent, and then the salient entities in this utterance, which is Mob Museum, and if Vegas was specified, then even that can be carried over. In, in the particular example, if Vegas was not specified, then it's implicit. And then you have to carry these salient attributes to the next utterance and merge with the next question, which is, how do I get there? There's no explicit information of where. And the next turn could be, what are the hours? So it just gets better, harder and harder, and the technology needs to get better and better at, at the ability to process context across turns. Again, we have done this with this probabilistic approach where we can merge whether, how likely it is to use the previous utterances, entities, and intents, and then make a decision on the current utterance to give the best possible answer for the user. The second type of context was we were challenged to do this right, which is when we were working on the product Echo Show, which introduced a camera and a screen, the dynamics of interactions with Alexa changed. Let's take an example of how, you, uh, how a user interacts with Echo Show, leveraging the camera and the screen. Alexa, show me a blue shirt. OK. Alexa, select the second one. Alexa, show more. So again, here, the first utterance was very clear. There was an intent to buy a blue shirt. What happened following that was quite ambiguous. There were many few, there was selections about select the second one. But sometimes users say, select so the second one. Alexa won. Now this, the same challenge I described, which was a context across turns, now you have yet another dimension, which is what's the information shown on the screen. Alexa now needs to understand what is being shown on the screen, interpret it, merge it with the current utterance. Here again, in addition to now context across different turns, we are bringing in another information, which is what's shown on the screen. And this capability is not limited to just shopping. Show is pervasive as a way of interacting with both the screen and the camera across if you're calling, if you're trying to find your, uh, what movie is playing in your uh, movie theater next to you. Everything around that, even if you're looking at news, 
the interaction changes to a multimodal context, and this is where Alexa has become much smarter over the last 12 months. The third type of context is with the pervasive nature of Alexa and adoption in many different devices, which are all very different. Alexa now needs to be aware about what each device is capable of. I call this the context handling in the case of evolving device context. Let's take an example of what I mean. Alexa, play the Lost City of Z. Getting your book from Audible, resuming the Lost City of Z. Obsession in the Amazon by David Grant. Read for you by Mark Deakins. Alexa, play the Lost City of Z. Getting the Lost City of Z from Fire TV. So what you saw there in the first interaction where the user was interacting with an echo which doesn't have a screen, when she requested play Lost City of Z, notice there was no trigger word like play the book or play the movie. And she just said play Lost City of the Z. And we played the audiobook without asking for a clarification. On the second utterance, the echo was actively connected with a Fire TV which has a screen capability or outputting the, uh, playing something on the screen, or like your TV screen, Alexa was context aware that I am actually collected through an echo to a Fire TV, so I should dynamically change my interpretation from not playing the book, the audio book, but instead play the movie. Again, there were no follow-up questions asked. It was a seamless, frictionless interaction where we avoided asking a question to the customer by simply making the decision because we knew that there is also a, a movie available and that there is an active connection between a screenless device and a device with a screen. This transcends itself to other types of interactions with the screen. And again, this whole gamut of capabilities here is growing every day. The fourth type of context, which is huge amount of fun as well, is personal context. Alexa is a device in a home where multiple people interact with the, uh, the device. It would be great if Alexa could separate who's speaking so that it can customize its action to the actual speaker. We have added this capability to Alexa, and it can now recognize the speaker. We call this feature your voice, and we are already using it for things like communications. When you send a message, you don't have to say who you are, it, if Alexa knows you, it will auto-sign the text message. You can get your own playlist. You can shop without using the pin. You don't have to remember that pin. Here's how Alexa understands who's speaking. Take, let's take a look. Alexa, who am I? I'm talking to Connor. Hey? This is Connor's account. Alexa, who am I? Julia is speaking. You're in Connor's account. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now try it. Alexa, who am I? I'm not sure who's speaking, but you're in Connor's account. So here, what you saw is the first two users who were interacting with Alexa were enrolled into Alexa. Alexa knew about them. The third speaker was a visitor, so when she asked, who am I, Alexa said, I don't know who you are. The way we have implemented this feature is also highlights how we work backwards from our customers in attacking the hardest types of problems. The first is that you have to enroll only once to Alexa in your devices. You don't have to, or every, let's say you buy a new device, you don't have to let and set up your enrollment profile again. You don't have to set up your voice models. You don't have to speak to it again to say, I'm Mike or I'm John or I'm Mary. You don't have to say that. That's possible because the speaker recognition is happening in the cloud. And so you have to just set it up once. The second thing we have added is that there is no passphrase or a particular utterance like if you say Alexa or a pen that you need to remember to say to, for Alexa to, to use that as an input to understand who you are or recognize who you are. We call this as text independent technology. So these are incredibly hard to do right and the way we have done it is by a two, combination of two things. One, we use deep learning to model the speaker variability. 
And two, we use feature vectors like what we talked about, I vectors that we use for speaker adaptation for speech recognition. The same feature vector is being used in a clever ways to distinguish between different speakers in the household. Again, you, uh, you learn more about this th throughout the reInvent. So I talked about all the ways we have made Alexa smarter. Now I'd like to spend a few minutes on how you can use it to, in your own skills. So for the very onset of Alexa, we wanted to expose every capability we build to developers so that they can use in their skills. There are two sets of APIs that allow you to do so. One is the Alexa voice service. What Alexa voice service lets you do is to integrate Alexa into your devices and applications with a simple set of APIs. The second is the Alexa Skills Kit. Alexa Skills Kit allows you to build skills on Alexa using, again, a set of APIs that are available to you. This approach is working. We have 25,000 plus skills now. A year ago, when I spoke at reInvent, we had 5,000. That's a 5x increase within this time period. It's huge. It's greatly gratifying for me to see that a self-serve tools are working for you to build skills for your customers. There is a skill for every occasion now, and it's not slowing down. It's just getting faster and faster in terms of how many developers are building on Alexa every day. What has happened with that is the weekly active users for skills has gone up by 5x. And the, ex the growth in the interactions with custom skills or third-party skills is just growing hugely. It's exponential growth. We're extremely delighted about that. Next, I'd like to spend, like, talk a few more minutes on how you can use all the capabilities I talked about earlier about making Alexa smarter. How can you use them in your skills now? Moments ago, I talked about the feature Your Voice, which was speaker recognition capabilities to personalize your interactions to the who you're speaking to the device or your skill. I'm super excited to announce that in early 2018, you will be able to use this capability in your own skills, which means your skills will take personalized actions. I can't wait to see what you'll do and what you'll invent to make Alexa even more magical and delight your customers. The second feature I get a lot of requests about is when can Alexa be more proactive? The answer is Alexa is already quite proactive on a few skills. For instance, if you, were, if you had shopped something, you will get a proactive notification from Alexa. That's already there. A few skills are already using these, what we call this as a notification feature for notifying your customers if they have opted in, like you would like to know what's the uh, sports update for your favorite team, where's your pizza delivery at. So there are many use cases for this proactive notification. Today I'm excited to announce that we are expanding the developer preview of notifications where more developers can experience this feature and make the feature useful for their skills, for their customers. Our vision is skill, should be mad, skill building should be easy, fast, and magical for end users to interact with. We have made a ton of investment in this area in the last 12 months. We have released an incredible number of capabilities. Let's first review on how, what we have done to build skills easily. We have one of these instances, and the best example is this new skill builder which has a more intuitive interface for you as developers to build skills. It has a large library of what we call built-in semantic elements or pre-built intents and entity types that you can use in your skill. If you're building a skill for ordering food, you don't need to worry about food items. That type of entity type is already in there. More of this will start coming to your use in, within the Skill Builder tool, which will have better, skill, uh, better discovery of these functionalities and easy to integrate these pre-built capabilities. We are incredibly happy about where we are with Skill Builder and the adoption we have seen for it. For making skill building faster, we have also introduced a command line tool because we got tons of requests for it. With that, you can 
within minutes get a skill up and running either by using one of our publicly available skill samples. What it also does, it makes skill testing, automation, everything super easy and you can submit your skill easily as well. So we're really excited about this, uh, about the command line interface too. In addition to build, making skills be easy to build and faster to build, we've also added a lot of functionality for it to be magical for our end users. One of the, my favorites is what we call SpeechCon, which is the ability for our text-to-speech engine to morph how it speaks out. Like you can change the pronunciation, you can change the rate, you can change the, you can make Alexa whisper. Let's take a listen. What were the wishbone's last words? Oh, snap. One more. For National Coffee Day, I'm taking a double shot of processing power. Oh boy, I think it's working. Am I talking fast? I feel like I'm talking fast. That's why I didn't take caffeine today. As the number of skills is growing, we want to make it incredibly easy to discover skills. You sh our vision is that you shouldn't have to remember what skills are enabled by you or what skills are in our skill store. You should simply ask and get the most relevant skill, and the most relevant skill should give an answer that is most adequate for the query you gave. That, to me, is the power of the voice paradigm where you don't have to remember anything or go and look at a particular interface, let's say a skill store on the website or in your companion app. You should just ask and get the answer. We have done several things to make this happen. The very first one was, you can just say, Alexa, play Jeopardy. And if, even if you did not have Jeopardy enabled, Jeopardy skill will come and you can interact with it right away. No enablement required. You don't have to remember what the skill is called. You don't have to say, Alexa, enable Jeopardy. Just Alexa, play Jeopardy. Super simple, reduces the friction incredibly. What we have done is also extended this capability to group of skills. You can say, Alexa, let's play a game, and one of the game skills will, if you have already enabled or if you have not enabled, will be recommended to you. The latter part of enabling a new skill we call as skill suggestion, where Alexa, on utterances that used to fail, will now suggest a skill that is likely to answer that query. Let's take an example. Alexa, let's play a game. Sure, I know lots of games. Do you want to try World Detective? Yes. It looks like you have an existing game in progress. You have collected one clue and traveled to zero countries. Would you like to continue your existing game? Yes. So here, again, super simple, where Alexa came back and suggested a game, the user said yes to it, and the interaction can keep going on. No skills to remember, simply ask. We are making this capability of na interaction and discovery with skills even more natural. Let's take another look where what we used to have, where you have to say, Alexa, ask Uber to get me a ride to the airport, on how you don't have to now remember to say, ask Uber, which means you don't have to use this skill name, nor use what we call an invocation pattern of the form ask or open. Let's take a look at this example. Alexa, set a rhythm of 100 beats per minute. All right, here's my metronome, changing to 100 beats per minute. Alexa, slow down. All right, my metronome, changing to 90 beats per minute. So on this, if you notice, there was, we didn't build a skill for this rhythm setting. Somebody in this room, maybe not, <laughs> built a skill called metronome, and it's called my metronome. The user in this case never mentioned that skill in the utterance. And it was a third party skill built, so we couldn't know what was already there, and how should Alexa interact with it? So in this case, dynamically, Alexa figured out that there's a relevant skill metronome and, and not only understood the request as to which skill should handle, passed that exact utterance to the skill, and the skill came back with a response. 
This is incredibly challenging to do when you have hundreds and hundreds of skills. And it becomes daunting at 25,000 skills. The reason is that there is no common semantic representation of what a particular skill calls a particular entity. In here, rhythm, heartbeat, all these words are being used, and it can be used in different contexts in another skill. So you just don't know which is the most relevant skill amongst these ever-increasing set of skills that are available in our skill store. So how do we do this, both accurately and maintaining latency to very minor set of seconds? You have to do this fast and accurately, and at 25,000 plus skills and growing incredibly hard. The way we'd solve this problem is through a two-stage approach. First, when the user spoke that utterance where there was no mention of a, which skill it was directed to, we shortlisted through deep learning models which, which are the most likely skills that can answer this query. We cut it down to a handful of them, let's say 10 or 5. And then for each of these shortlisted skills, we parse the entire utterance against what we call skill-specific models that you developers build by using our self-serve tools by just providing the interaction patterns. And when that's there, a model is already built for your skill. And once we have shortlisted for this particular utterance dynamically, we are now able to parse this utterance across multiple skills and then rank the hypotheses to say, you know what, for this utterance, the skill my metronome should answer the query. And as you saw, one shot interaction, no follow-up questions, no need to remember the metronome skill, just again asking for the request. So I've talked about how we made Alexa smarter, how are a few ways you can use these. In fact, the natural skill interaction that I just talked to you about, this is being rolled out as we speak. You will be able to more, use more and more skills, will be able to take advantage of natural skill interaction where even if the user does not mention the skill name or the invocation pattern, it will just work. I'm super excited for that. What we'll find over time, even when skills are not enabled, we'll be able to discover the most relevant skills and give you the response directly. So stay tuned for that. Now I'm, I'm super excited to talk about the next phase, which is the Alexa Prize. This is the university-focused competition I talked about. And uh, Ashwin Ram, Senior Manager for AI uh, Science, will talk about Alexa Prize, and then we'll announce the winners. Ashwin. Thank you, Rohit. So the Alexa Prize, as many of you are aware, is a competition for university students to create a conversational skill for Alexa. We call it a social bot. They can engage in social conversations with customers on popular topics and news events that might be current to the day. The challenge we set forth was to speak coherently and engagingly with customers and engage them in conversations that would last 20 minutes. Hard problem. We had, we had over 100 applications to compete in the Alexa Prize competition. We selected 18 teams to compete. 15 of them started the process, developed initial skills, which we then released to the Alexa customer base to interact with. These teams worked all year on many of the problems that Rohit mentioned earlier, a conversational speech recognition, particularly in the face of errors, natural language understanding, carrying context over, over multiple turns of our dialogue. And in a social conversation, the context may change a little bit from turn to turn as you weave your way through different topics. They had to do all of that. How do we maintain the memory and context across these turns? They dealt with question asking. They also dealt with a number of uh, advanced capabilities. For example, to talk about everyday topics that are in the news, these social bots had to read the news every day and stay up to date on current topics. We call that knowledge ingestion. How do they le learn about the world around them, ingest it, and incorporate it into these dialogues in near real time to be able to interact with customers? They dealt with personalization and a number of other kinds of uh, challenges. So in May of this year, we released these skills out to the general public. You could talk with them, but just by saying, Alexa, let's chat. 
Alexa would randomly connect you to one of these social bots. We had over 40,000 hours of conversation with Alexa customers spanning millions of interactions over the year that provided feedback and data and input to the social bots to get better and better and better using a variety of learning approaches that the teams developed. And over that process, with the help of all of this interaction data and the ratings we got back, we down-selected and chose three finalists, which were the best of the bunch, to then compete for the grand challenge. The teams are actually here with us. Uh, let's give them a round of applause. Teams, please stand. Stand up, stand up. So we have teams from Czech Tech University in Prague, from Harriet Watt University in Scotland, and the University of Washington in Seattle, who were the finalists. Let's have, take a quick look at how the teams address these challenges. My name is Hao Fang, and I'm the team leader of our team sounding board. We want to build a bot that uh, engages users in an informative and uh, interesting conversation, and by actively understanding the user in terms of their personality and their sentiment. We have really the first bot that I've interacted with that actually knows how to bring up new content and can kind of try to see which one is sticking. One thing I underestimated is how many people really appreciate having someone to talk to, um, even if it's just a bot, but something to bounce ideas off of, a more interactive way of finding out about news, um, about the world. I think the main thing that we contributed is that we showed we can just take a lot of data and start to look at, in a very personal way, what someone wants to talk about and get a flow going there. Being able to talk like a human is what, I mean, people in the 50s envisioned. I was very impressed by what my team was able to accomplish. They've come a long way. The, the system has changed quite a lot from when we first started. I'm impressed at how user-focused and the attention to detail and thinking about the system. They've all really bought into that idea. Alquist is special because it can talk about broad ranges of topics. Up to now there was just some personal assistance which can answer you some questions. But Alquist can talk almost about anything. Well, the goal of the project was to push conversational AI, natural language processing, understanding and generation. But we actually started to put more and more work into dialogue design and into the things that our bot actually says, so that they are interesting and they are engaging for the user. I believe that the greatest thing about Alquist is that it's not only the social bot, but, but its a framework. It makes us easy to develop a new dialogues uh, about uh, almost anything. I think that the future of conversational AI will look similar to what we are doing now. I worked long time in speech recognition and uh, it took maybe 30 years before we saw Alexa, which is really making our dreams happen. And now we can say, Alexa, tell me this and that, and it really works. team leader of WhatsApp Bot Team, which developed the Alana system. One of the key features of a system is that it's not restricted by topics. So users interact with Alana through just natural everyday conversation. They don't have to give specific commands, they can just speak normally to the system and they can expect a socially intelligent response. It was a very difficult challenge. Um, imagine you have to talk to a complete stranger for 20 minutes, someone you've never met. Um, that's even difficult for a human to do. Um, so for an AI system, that's even more difficult. And she's very good at taking the initiative when the user is not, but she's also very good at responding to the user uh, when they have a topic that they want to talk about. So basically it doesn't impose any any boundaries or, or constraints on what the user can, can say. It gives me an understanding of 
how complex conversational AI actually is. So as uh, Rohit mentioned, the Alexa Prize is intended as a research test bed for university students and other researchers to push the boundaries of artificial intelligence. The teams are excited to share with you some of the advances they've made. If you head over to our website, alexaprize.com, there are technical papers by all 15 teams on the approaches they developed, what they tried, what, what, they, what didn't work, what worked well. Uh, and so you're free to read those and leverage that in your own work. We also have a deep dive session this afternoon at 1.30, along with a short film describing the finals process that we wanted to share with you how we judged the, the winner. So you're welcome to uh, come and attend that uh, as well if you're interested. And now the moment we've all been waiting for. Earlier this morning, I was handed an envelope by our audit team. Rohit, would you do the honors? Yes. Are you guys excited? I can't repeat an Academy Award here, so I have to do this right. Ashwin, you made sure we have the right envelope. So, Click now. with an average score of 3.17 on a scale of 1 to 5, an average duration of 10 minutes, 22 seconds. Remember, the goal was 20 minutes. The first prize winner is University of Washington Sounding Board. Come up on the stage. Come on up, come on up, guys, come on up. Come on up. <laughs> there you go. Congratulations. Yes. Congratulations. Excellent work. Great work. Congratulations. Yes. Great work. Great work. Yes. Great work. Great Super exciting. Wait, Rohit. I got a second envelope as well. Second envelope. Okay. So let me see. These envelopes are never easy. So let me see what this is. So the second prize. You weren't this expecting this. The second prize with an average score of 2.72 out of 5. Average duration of 3 minutes, 55 seconds, goes to Czech Tech University, AlQuest. And here's the... Oh, wait. But we have a surprise for you. You weren't expecting this. But we do have a check of $100,000 for the second prize as well. <laughs> Come on out. Well done. Great, right, like congratulations. Nice work. Congratulations. Great work, Jan. Yes, congratulations. Yeah. Can I get a picture for you guys as well? I'm going to hold your chest. That's the right? Yet another envelope. And of envelope. course, a third envelope. Okay, I'll hand this to you so that I don't make a mistake. So here, no surprises for the third place, but the scores are important. So third place is Harriet Watt, What's Up Bot, average score of 2.36, average duration of 4 minutes, 1 second. Congratulations to you all as well. And we have a... <laughs> 
There's a third check hidden. Come up on stage. So the third prize for fifty thousand dollars. Come on. Congratulations. Yeah, nice work. Very well. Yeah. Very well. Nice work, guys. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations, all of us. Yeah, congratulations. Yes. Give the team the check. See you. Super exciting, but the ultimate goal of 20 minutes wasn't broken. So in Amazon, we are relentless. So we're going to do this again. And so I'm extremely excited today to announce the second edition of the Alexa Prize. We'll keep the social bot track, and I can't wait how much further we'll get the next year. It's, I'm already proud of where we are with the first year, but then this was the first year, and the goal will continue, and we're going to work hard together to break that barrier of 20 minutes. So while I focused on conversational AI, and we also talked about where the future is headed, I want to take a minute on how AI permeates every business in Amazon, be it robotics and fulfillment center, where we have incredible use of machine learning, computer vision technologies, or Prime Air for drone delivery, which again uses incredible amount of machine learning, vision technologies, a lot of uh, other areas of machine learning to make what that last mile problem be super easy for delivering the packages faster. Or Amazon AWS AI, which you'll hear a lot about during this week. So let's take a look of how AI is being used pervasively across every part of Amazon. I think natural language understanding, I think machine learning in general, artificial intelligence, probably hard to overstate how big of an impact it's going to have on society over the next 20 years. The vehicle is completely autonomous. Uh, it, it lands by itself, it navigates by itself. Um, it can fly more than 50 miles an hour, it has a 20 mile range. We are really just beginning in robotics. It is, the, it is the birth of robotics right now. We use our machines at Amazon uh, so that we can have a more efficient fulfillment process. Ultimately, it's about humans and machines collaborating together in order to achieve a meaningful task. Alexa, add anniversary to my calendar. Alexa, accept the call. Hey, Mom. Alexa, play my relaxing playlist. Alexa, turn off the lights. Okay. So with Amazon AI, we're bringing the power of deep learning and advanced machine learning to all developers so that they can bake intelligence inside the heart of every application and inside the heart of every business. Recognition allows you to pass an image to us and we will detect objects in an image. We'll be able to tell you that there's a person in this image or it's a woman in this image or it's a car. With AI, we're completely reimagining what it means to search. From landmarks to books, business search enriches the world around you with contextual information powered by artificial intelligence. Today, we don't have any if conversation. Every conversation is a when and how conversation. This is the world that I want to live in. Thank you all for all the amazing work you're doing. Incredible amount of progress in AI in every field, but we are still in day one. Let's close with final words from Captain Kirk. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention. Now is the time to boldly go and do what no developer has done before. Thank you, and enjoy your time at reInvent. Thank you very much. <laughs>